Right, hello guys, welcome to 2023. Have a fantastic year. All the best to you all and thank you very much for, for being here with me on the channel. Um, and welcome to another episode. Uh, this time we're going to talk about another fantastic and absolutely brilliant game, Folklore The Affliction. This, um, I have to say, is, uh, is the best game I have in my collection. Um, because this I always call a Baldur's Gate on a table. And I know that some of you might say, blasphemy, <laughs> there's only one Baldur's Gate. But the reason why I'm calling Folklore the Affliction the Baldur's Gate on the table is for the very simple reason, because it gives me the same experience that I encountered many, many years ago when the original Baldur's Gate 1 was released on PC and I played it, I bought it. And I fell in love with it and I even today it, there's a huge nostalgia around it <clears throat> you know the stories the replayability the experience in general so folklore the affliction is something like that on a table it just gives you so many stories to tell fantastic world to explore and many many monsters to encounter Talking about monsters to encounter, let me show you all of them before we zoom in. And before we talk about some of them without any spoilers, hopefully, um, we will go one by one and show you what, what they look like in my collection. You might, you might, you might notice a, a specific selection of colors and, and shading, and this was done on the artist's suggestion <clears throat> and he did a magnificent job with that. Um, the original um, minis for Folklore the Affliction they are not of the highest quality. If you ever you know had them in your hand you might say that they don't look very detailed or some of the uh, minis are not even. Even I mean you know in terms of details and, and the quality of it. But what he managed to achieve and pull out of them with the choice of colors and shading and things like that, uh, I mean, absolutely fantastic. I have to tell you that um, the, the, the last expansion, the Fall of the Spire, is not painted. So you will not see uh, the, the minis today. And the reason is simple. I haven't even had a chance to go through the Dark Tales entirely because I keep I keep uh, enjoying myself in the exploration of the world so much that I just don't have the time. So maybe during the year we will complete the collection with Fall of the Spire painted minis. But before that, let's go through what we have already. Let's start with the heroes. And to all of you who've played Folklore the Affliction, you know that the selection of heroes is quite specific. The classes, the types, the way you play them. For those of you who've never seen or played Folk of the Affliction, I highly, highly recommend that you do that because this is something different. Of course, you have your fighters, healers and so on, but the way you play them without any spoilers is, is slightly different than your other games. Right, let's start with the Witch Hunter. There you go. Um, you have the... What's he, what's he called? Slayer? I think he's a Slayer. Warlord, yeah, the Slayer will, will come later. We have the Exorcist, one of my favorites. One of my favorites from the set. <clears throat> There's the Druidess. Two of them are our main healers. The Arcanist. Ranger Hunter with, with these mushrooms to his, to his legs. Close to his legs, right. Then we have some more. I think this is the Slayer, isn't she? That's what she's called, Slayer. The Illusionist, uh, one of the craziest <laughs> uh, heroes to pick. I really like playing him. Fantastic, fantastic hero. Then we have some of the ladies, the scientist, the... Uh, what's her name again? Uh, the Telepath. Yeah, she's also one of my favorites to play with. Um, the Brawler. Um, the gentleman, not the brawler. Yeah, gentleman. Here you go. You can you can play as a gentleman who enjoys his fist fighting. Oh, Indy. I mean, archaeologist. <laughs> but it's Indiana Jones. You know, you, you just have to call him like that with this bat. Whip, I mean, not bat. Um, yeah. 
butcher right here ready for for action uh what's her name the courtesan oh yeah she's uh, she's really good at manipulating your enemies and and changing their um actions and things like that avenging madman right there in the corner with his sickle right so this is the selection of heroes you can pick from and they come from all three sets okay so if you have the all-in uh, folk or the affliction then you'll have this um, range of, of heroes to pick from you can start from two all the way up to four i think is limit i can't remember i always play with either three or four because the game was not balanced for two uh, you can also incorporate a lot of house rules which you can find a gazillion of on, on the BGG forums. And this is the beauty of the Folk or the Affliction. It's a sandbox, it's an engine. You can do whatever you want with it. And um, yeah, you can break the game sometimes, but uh, there's been so many custom made uh, content that expands the game significantly. I highly, highly recommend that you browse the BGG forums uh to 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 see that right let's move on to some of the villains that we're going to encounter in the game one of my favorites the empuse coven ladies right there with snakes and some ar arcane circle they're standing in performing some wicked ritual surrounded with stregas yeah right there and you know have a look at the choice of colors and shading that he picked i mean brilliant look at that absolutely brilliant same with the empusai coven these these enemies I'll, I'll try to keep this video spoiler free but they are <laughs> absolutely brutal when you encounter them especially early on in the game let's have a look some, at some of the hacks that you can encounter as well in the game right there there she is one of them evil evil beings yeah absolutely brutal yeah <clears throat> then we have the alchemist from the far east brewing his potions and throwing them at you doing some crazy crazy stuff if you allow him to do that right let's move on <clears throat> to some druids and dark book of dimensions this is one of the again spoiler spoiler free this is one of the enemies that you encounter reasonably early on but you can come across it later during random events <laughs> very very interesting fight to say the least without any spoilers you have the druid on the right and the uh what's his name galastig one of the named uh, villains that you can come across during your adventures something um, close to druid but again no spoilers no spoilers here guys um, oh you have the um, undertaker of course forgot his name with his with his uh, trusted dog that accompanies him during any encounters with the with the undertaker very interesting very interesting enemy with some with some cool mechanics during the fight that uh, corresponds with the dog as well <clears throat> you have some tiny evil hands coming from the ground from the graves um, nasty things small but nasty <laughs> they can they can put you in a lot of uh, pressure under pressure and a lot of issues that you can uh, you can expect from them now, this is another named enemy. Uh, Valdeleni, or if I pronounce it uh, correctly. Um, it's like a evil witch hag sorcerer person. <laughs> evil, evil as you might imagine. Great. And now we come to one of my favorites out of the set. They are smaller, smaller minis, but the way the artist, the painter mm, created them for me is absolutely fantastic. These are the possessed, okay? And yeah, you might expect they're not very nice ladies. They're not here to chat with you. 
they're here to haunt you and they are really really good at doing that so be possessed i really like the way they came out with all their uh, clothes covered in blood their wicked wicked faces coming after you okay let's move on to the <clears throat> second portion of our villains and let's go to the forest yeah so this is one of the main bosses in the in the core set uh, i decided you have the option when you when you buy the box you have the option to change his uh, arms limbs and head i decided to go for this selection because i prefer the way he looks like that yeah that, that's him there he is, surrounded by his, um, what are they called again? I keep forgetting, the dark oaks. Yeah, this is the dark oak, like that. And the other one to his side, right here. Evil things, as you might imagine. <laughs> right, let's stay in the forest. And my number one mini from the entire collection is this wood mother. This is the wood mother. Oh, she's absolutely fantastic to fight against. Whether it's a skirmish or a proper fight during during one of the adventures, but she's absolutely fantastic. The miniature, the miniature came out gorgeous. I mean, absolutely fantastic. She's coming out of this stump uh, tree or something, <clears throat> and she's surrounded by her trusted spriggans. Oh, these are nasty. These are absolutely brutal <clears throat> if you if you can't if you encounter them unprepared the spriggans yeah to the right is the uh, evil lady Bananach that's what her name is she comes from Legends Untold <laughs> another great game by the way yeah that's Bananach right and now I hope you know. My excitement does not correspond to the wobbliness of the of the camera. But now we come to the undead corner. There's the lich right there in the middle. Summoning the undead, raising them from the graves. You have some uh, skeletons right there, a zombie and a necromancer. Look at them. There's two of them, one here. And the other one on the other side these are the necromancers chanting their curses and spells and raising more zombies from the dead and they're also accompanied by a fantastic fantastic meanings these are the chaos spawn or demon spawn demon spawn All right so there's the there's one of them the demon spawn Another one like that, and the third one somewhere here. Yeah, there he is. Great minis, representation of demons. <laughs> there you go, some ghosts, spirits. We decided to uh, paint them like this. And one of them, the boss, is, is red, as you can tell. Twisted in agony. There you go. Okay. Oh, we have some vampires. A vampire right here. One of them. The other one next to him. Okay, some more zombies, skeletons. Another charging skeleton. Let's have a look at. Oh, there's another. There's another vampire who was uh, turned his back on us let's let's go for some of the fine details on this on this miniature oops sorry sorry for the camera yeah there you go sorry for the wobbliness but it's kind of uh, difficult sometimes to go through these minis without wobbliness and things like that <clears throat> Even though I have my camera on a tripod, it's still quite wobbly. So I hope it, it doesn't cause any dizziness, but yeah, that's that's where we are. Right, some of the uh, highwaymen, 
you know, standard, typical RPG enemies. These are the guardsmen, whatever they called. Yeah, guardsmen. Highwaymen, right there. So your typical enemies that you come across, especially early on in the game. Oh, this one fell asleep. Right, and we come to, again, no spoilers, the wolf corner, <laughs> if you like. Right, so you have some wolves, werewolves at that, because you'll, you'll encounter plenty of that when you, especially in the, in, in the core um, <clears throat> stories, you will encounter plenty of these. Again, that's, that's all I'm going to say with this big guy right there in the middle. Um, interesting fight, very interesting fight with him. Once you once you come across his lair, and we come across to some of the bigger bigger buddies. This one, this one is uh, the Abomination. I really like him. The way he came out with with the lighting, with the with the details, with the shading, and of course, as you might imagine, the fight against him is quite brutal. Then you have some demons. Of course, you have to have demons in the proper RPG, don't you? There you go, surrounded by gargoyles and some flames. You've seen these gargoyles in, in my D&D playthroughs. So I, I really like <clears throat> these models. And last but not least, we have two enemies. This one here is a crossover from Midara, I suppose. I think so. What's his name again? Uh, Shadow Lord, of course. Right, Shadow Lord. I haven't come across him in, in my adventures yet, so I don't know what the fight is all about and his mechanics and things like that. But I know he's a crossover from Midara. Uh, and he came in one of the promo packs during one of the um, Kickstarter campaigns for Folk of the Affliction. Anyways, he's sitting on this throne of, I don't know, what, skulls? No, it's not skulls. It's something, something else. Anyways, his uh, miniature came out <clears throat> pretty pretty nicely with all the details and some strange clothes, wings at his back. There you go. Like I said, I've never come across him yet. We'll see. Maybe I'll um, find his uh, quest or rumor card that will lead me to his, to his uh, whereabouts. I don't know. And my number one um, mini from the entire set is this doppelganger. Look at that. This is the doppelganger. Yeah. I uh, will not spoil anything about his fight <laughs> because that's something that's a topic for another discussion. And maybe when we actually post one of the playthroughs on the channel, maybe we will find him and you will see for yourself. Or if you have encountered him in your playthroughs, tell me what you think about him in the comment section below. I really enjoyed the fight against him. And I love the miniature, the heads, you know, with, with the skin right there. Look at that. Absolutely brilliant. Brilliant. Right. So that's that, I suppose. Hopefully you enjoyed this little collection update with painted minis, this time for my number one game in the collection, Folk of the Affliction. I haven't uh, actually played it for a while. And now that I have that I went through all the minis, I just felt like playing it again. <laughs> Since we have the table ready, who knows, maybe I'll put it out and we'll go through the, um, you know, the opening adventure again with some of the um, random heroes at that. Uh, what I enjoy in Folk of the Affliction is pulling these, um, you know, heroes randomly and choosing the um, the party like a roguelike, really, and, you know, seeing how far I can go before, before my character die, all my characters die, even though you can play as ghosts in, in this game. Yes, you can. But I enjoy the roguelike uh, style. Uh, of choosing random party and taking them as far as it's possible uh, without dying or, you know, until TPK occurs. Yeah? And then I stop it and I try again and I try again. Uh, this game allows you to do that. This game even allows you to play without any of the sto uh, storybooks. You, you just pull out the deck of rumors 
that you can uh, pick up from every town you come across and then just play it like this, you know. You can forget about the story and just keep exploring, going from one rumor, basically a quest, from one quest to another and see how far you can go and how far you can develop your 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 heroes and what adventures you come across. This is the reason why I think Folklore of the Affliction is is the crown in my is the jewel in the crown of my collection. And uh, the competition is quite hard. K Kingdom Death Monster, Warhammer Quests, Descent Second Edition, Dungeons and Dragons, and Dark Souls, and then the rest of it. I I could yeah, I could tell you all about it, but this game always brings me a lot of uh, fantastic experience and enjoyment. Right, there you go. That's the Folklore of the Affliction. Update on the painted minis. Um, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed it. Please let me know what you think about it. Uh, what you think about the color choices, the selection of shading and slightly different style that you might expect from Folklore of the Affliction. Let me know what you think. Hopefully, hopefully you enjoyed it. Once again, welcome to 2023. Have a have a fantastic year, and I'll see you on the channel shortly with some of the some of the playthroughs for for Warhammer Quest, for Dungeons and Dragons, and maybe maybe for Folklore: The Affliction. Right. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed that one, and I'll see you in the next episode shortly. Bye bye.